Here we are on a Monday, uh, November the 28th, 2016, and it's our first accountability call with the lovely, the very gorgeous senior consultant, Paul Mitchell. So first of all, what I want to do is to bring him in on the line and see how his first day went. Paul, are you there? I am here. What's up? Uh, well, you know, it was a good first day. I was I was successful. I made my invitation, uh, reached the people I was trying to reach, um, and uh, and the then the headline is I I already got somebody coming to a presentation tomorrow. <laughs> okay, and thanks very much and good night. <laughs> I'm stuck there on a high note. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. Okay, well, t- t- tell tell us the details. I'm, I'd be I'm intrigued. Okay, so uh, this was uh, this was my boss Matthew. And uh, oh, yeah. I, I was going to talk to him in person, and so I thought the best way to talk to me in a hurry was to catch him on my way out of the office. Um, ah, okay. And so that was what I did. Last thing I said before I left was I, I went in, I, I I spoke to him the words that we wrote down, and uh, he was very receptive. Uh, since we work two blocks from Sherlock's, we're going to be at the, uh, the business presentation at noon tomorrow for Sherlock's. And he's going to try and bring along his wife if she's available. So, um, so you pretty much went exactly as per the invite. Exactly. Uh, let me ask you this, just again for those folks who are listening in. Um, my first question is: Is did you write the invite down? I did. And uh, let me know your feelings about that. Did it make you? Because you're already a very confident, confident chap, and, and but you did admit yesterday you can talk too much if you're not careful. Give me the kind of the, the the warm and fuzzy feeling about having the invite there, ready, prepared, and written down. What were your thoughts about that? Well, I, I think it's a good thing. I mean, I obviously didn't have it in front of me because I didn't want to be sitting in front of his desk reading some script. But uh, but I did, you know, look over it uh, and re- remind myself what did we write. Uh, so I, I'm sure I ended up paraphrasing it, but uh, I covered mm-hmm. all the top points and then stopped talking. Fantastic. Well, that's excellent. And you're meeting him tomorrow at Sherlock's. Um, I'm meeting him tomorrow at Sherlock's. Well, uh, I'm not sure how busy I am, but if I'm done, I may come over there and just come and join you guys for lunch anyway, and uh, maybe I could be your three-way if if need be. That would be great. Always good to see you since he's a business owner. You know, one of the reasons I like Sherlock's was a number of business owners come there. Uh, Right. You know, Pat Ezernak, and and I don't remember his last name, but see Steve, who owns a Thai restaurant. And so I wanted him to to, to encounter yeah. some, some traditional business owners. And so having yeah, you there would be a, a great addition to that. Yeah, I'll do my best to get there. Uh, I've got some commitments in the morning, but uh, by 12, I should be good to get there. So that sounds good. Okay. Well, great. Good. Thumbs up on that one. Did, were you able to make any other invites today? Yes. The other uh, the other I made was my friend Elizabeth, uh, who shut me down cold. I mean, okay, I, 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 I spoke the words and stopped talking, and she said, I'm not interested, and I don't know anybody who would be. But she, how did she know what to be interested in or not? Uh, well, I'm, we're Facebook friends. I'm sure she's seen some of my Facebook posts and and and, so she and, knew and is aware that Facebook, she knew it was Ambit. Yeah. Okay, and well, that's fine. Um, uh, did, so yeah, it, it, when someone shuts you down like that, were you able to get the? It may or may not be your cup of tea or not in the invite. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, great, because that's hopefully where your protection is to say, well, look, you know, I, know, I understand this isn't for any everybody, um, and so, uh, you know, I appreciate, you know, you, you're taking the call and stuff, but thanks very much and goodbye. Gone. And that was what I did. Yeah, perfect. Uh, and it does hurt a little bit, uh, you know, let's, you know, let's not sugarcoat it when someone shuts you down, but that's part Richard, of the reason I why how we... much it hurt. It, 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 you know, I've been doing this for four years. I'm a senior consultant, and it hurt so yeah. bad I was ready to quit. Honestly, I, I, I was I was amazed at, at at how bad it hurt, and I I was ready to quit, and I haven't had that reaction to a no in literally in years, and yeah, that, I, it, it hit me like a brick, and I was ready to to shut down my ambit business, say screw this, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, two hours later, I walked in and talked to my boss, and now he's coming to a presentation. <laughs> And you know, but but isn't that interesting? And, and I, I, you know, I, I appreciate again you being completely honest. Even a, a, a well-established senior consultant, when they're shut down like that, um, it, it hurts, and someone steals your power. You know, when yeah. someone does that to me, um, the, the difference. And as a word of comfort, 
when you've got a few thousand dollars going into your account on residual income from this business and someone does that, you don't react as badly. Uh, you kind of smile and go, okay, well, we carry on being right uh, in your life over there because uh, you're missing out. You know, yeah. some people are like that. Um, but well, I'm, I'm not a common club member, but I am seeing some residual income, so I do know this works from my own personal experience. Uh, right. So, it, you know, it, I, I'm getting the benefit out of this, and I know that she's not going to. But the other thing that struck me was I was nervous about making these invitations today. I was not feeling it. And if I had not known that I was going to have this call today at this time, I was all set to say, you know what, I'll make these invitations tomorrow. I'll feel mm-hmm. better about it tomorrow. Yeah, now there's words of truth. And I've had those same I've had those same feelings as well. Um, and I guarantee people on this call have had the same feelings. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because obviously that you know really does illustrate the uh, the reason why the accountability call is the fulcrum, the central point to everything we do, not only on the purge call, but to your ambit business. Even if you exactly. don't have a, a purge call system, even if you use another system, you know, there are a few other systems out there. If you don't have that accountability partner, you won't make the call. Um, and uh, I get it. I completely get it. Um, uh, and, and let me ask you this. Whenever you make invites in this way, do you, are you always nervous or is it just today? Just today. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I get a little bit nervous. I think 20 seconds of insane courage and I start dialing the phone. But today yeah. was, uh, I, I can't explain it. It was much more so than normal. Uh, and here's what's interesting is you you spoke to Elizabeth first. She was your first call? Yeah, I called her around noontime. <laughs> So your first call shut you down. Yes. Uh, and you you picked yourself up, brushed yourself off, and start all over again with Matthew, and he's going to come to a business presentation tomorrow. That's right. Well, if that if that isn't a dose of reality, I don't know what is. That right there is the best and the worst about this business. You're exactly right. Um, you know, uh, when you're shut down like that, it feels horrible. Um, and and if you don't have accountability calls, if you don't have a system, if you always have bad invites because they're not prepared properly, you'll get way too many of those calls and you'll quit the business in way too short a time. So um, every reason why this um, purge call system or purge call approach is a one of the a great way to approach your business. So um, wow, what a first day! That's fantastic from. First of all, from the the result of, you know, obviously Matthew coming tomorrow, but secondly, for the coaching opportunity here, um, that's a real dose of truth right there. And uh, as I say, you know, let's say Elizabeth had won, right, and she did make you feel so bad that you thought, you know what, screw this, I'm I'm quitting. Imagine, you know, imagine the weight of that. If she had been the reason why you made a decision to quit, and I know you're as far away from that as ever would be, but someone listening to this call might not be. You've got five kids uh, and a wife who are working hard. You're 52, I believe. You're the same age as me, right? 54. 54. All right. Well, you just maybe look, you know, gorgeously young. Um, but, you know, we're approaching. We're it's approaching. The it's the hair. That's what it is. <laughs> but we're approaching retirement age. Imagine, right? Let's so, yeah. so, again, this is not for you, but this is for maybe someone who's listening who's just been shut down by someone like Elizabeth, and it's someone close to you, and it was the second person who's done it. And you quit. And in 11 years' time, when you retire, and maybe you've got some money saved, but you've, you've had weddings to pay for and college to pay for, so who knows how much money you would have, you could look back and look back at the reason why you are still having to work at 65 for another 5, 10 years to maintain your lifestyle because of one person who is 100% wrong stealing the power from you because she didn't know uh, what she was saying, what she was saying no to, but she stole the power. She won. That one conversation could steal a whole lifetime of um, easier living. That's, that very well scary? Said. That's very Isn't well that said. That's very well said. That's terrifying. That's terrifying. So, guys, who, 
Yeah, I, I'm really glad you brought this up, and it is kind of sobering, and it's, you know, often on these calls it's kind of light, but this isn't light. This is right. This is right there, central, right, right in the in the forefront of everybody when they look at their business like this. Whether they're you know super excited, whether they're shy, whether they're a real go getter, um, you know, this is right there. Those types of things will be the type of thing that could take you out of the business. Just don't allow them to. Just like Paul did, he talked, picked himself up because he knew he had an accountability call later on tonight. Made the had the conversation with Matthew, and now all of a sudden, Elizabeth is gone. She's in the history. She's passed, and now you've got your boss and his wife coming to look at the business tomorrow. And um, so, you know, it went from you know you wanting to feel like you wanted to quit the business to now being super excited that you'll have, you know, a, a business owner in your business. So good, good job, man. Good job. And and again, I, I really, I'm really glad that you, you know. Um, kind of set it how it is, because people need to hear it. Exactly, and if you know, if there's somebody listening to this recording that's ever been in that position. If somebody tells you no, and you just feel like, oh my God, I just can't do this business. This is not for me. And you didn't give in to that. You got you. I applaud you. You know, props to you. And don't ever give in to that. It doesn't always. It doesn't ever completely go away. But don't ever give in to it. Never quit. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely right. Um, so yeah, so if any of you are feeling that way and have had a couple of people who are, you know, giving you a hard time and you're finding it hard to get back on the horse or you're scared, um, you know, plug into the purge call, um, and, you know, get some, get some help from some upline to help you put invites together, you know, get them written down and jump back on the horse and another halfway house, which is what I did, um, uh, in the early days, I, I kind of got burned out for a different reason when I first started, I, I asked a lot of people to join, and I did actually manage to get a lot of people to join, but that was purely because I was, you know, very salesy. I didn't do the system right at all. I really sold them on it, but none of them did anything. And so I brought these people in. I'd made some bonuses, but I, I had no zero momentum in my business. Everybody I brought in didn't do something. And so the way I got back on the horse was um, a halfway house. And this is kind of a, for, again, for those of you who are too scared to make proactive invites, a good halfway house to get to making proactive invites, because you do need to do it, is to do a reactive invite, is to promise yourself. What I did was I promised myself that if I heard pain, because I genuinely believe that Ambit is the best business opportunity out there for someone for you know with, with any skill set to, to build a plan B, that can replace a job and certainly set you up for retirement. And for those who really want it, can can actually make you rich. I absolutely believe that. Um, and so what I did was I um, I prompt because I di I didn't want to make those calls and sell people on this thing that I knew they weren't going to work out. I I instead said just for a little while, all I'm going to do is I'm going to be a really good listener for pain. Whenever I hear pain, I promise myself. Because I'm not making calls, I promise myself as a as a counter as a counterweight to that that I will always offer some help. So, for example, Paul, if I was chatting to you and we were chatting away and you were telling me about your IT business and yeah, you make good money, but you got five kids and college around the corner, I've heard pain. And so, what I I became really good at, at what we call in our team we call it the reactive invite, um, which is an invitation, but it's actually more an offer of help where I'd say, hey, Paul, you know, I, I completely understand. You know, I, I've, I've got two kids myself and you know, both need to get to college um, as well. And I, and, and I had that same concern. And so I, I actually started a plan B um, to see what I could do about making some extra money. And it's going really well for me in the DFW area. Listen, I know you've got the, your kids are not actually far a different age than mine. Um, and I know you've got this, this concern about um, college. Both my kids are going to come out of college without any debt. Um, you may want to have a look at what I'm doing. I don't know if it's going to be your cup of tea or not, but you should just take a look. What are you doing for coffee tomorrow after work around 5.30? So it is still an invite. We're still following similar rules, but instead of it being a proactive call from a list, um, and again, remember, this is for those folks who fell off the horse and are finding it hard to get back on the horse, is to be prepared, is to promise yourself, as long as you still have faith in your ambit business, with which faith in your ambit business, which you absolutely 100% should because it is the best business model out there for you, 
is to is to be out there and just promise yourself that if you hear pain, you will offer help, and that help is just to maybe take a look at the um, uh, at the ambit business because it may be something that'll help you out. Maybe your cover tea, maybe not. But again, uh, I don't want to harp on about this, but it, it's because you brought this up, Paul. Is these people who've fallen off a horse and are hurting? Is that this reactive invite? responding to pain is a really great way of putting your foot back in the stirrup. You haven't jumped back on the horse yet, but your foot's in the stirrup. But as long as, but you must promise yourself, if I hear pain, I will invite. You still follow the same rules. So again, remember how I was saying to Paul, Paul was offering, was telling me about his pain at, at work and uh, he, he loves his job, but he's, you know, he's got five kids and, uh, and, and I, so I've heard pain. So listen, Paul. I mean, look, it's obviously it's not the right place right now because obviously we're at work, so we're in a hurry. But I had the same thing, and you um, uh, know, I had the same problem. Both my boys are getting ready to go to college. There's my why, um, and so um, I started a plan B alongside what I'm currently doing, which is going really, really well for me in the, especially in the DFW area. There's the hook number three. Uh, listen, I don't know if it's going to be your cup of tea or not. There's the takeaway. But both of my kids are going to come out of college without any uh, college debt. Um, and if that's something that's important to you, maybe you should take a look at what we're doing. What are you doing for coffee after work tomorrow? There's the intentional setting of time. So this is slightly different than the purge call because we're setting up invites for a proactive invite. This is a reactive invite for those who have just been through what Paul went through today and are finding it hard to get back on the horse. I'm sorry I went on a little bit long on that, but I think it's really important. Did you have any thoughts on that, Paul? Only to agree with you that I find the reactive invite is much easier uh, than, than the proactive to plan it out and say, all right, I'm going to call this person at this time. Uh, it's even easier to know that I'm going to see a person at a given time and place. And then when I do see them, then to, to casually bring it up in conversation. But the reactive invite to me is the easiest invitation there is. Yeah, no question. Uh, and, and you know, if you want, to, if one wants to build their business with a reactive invite, that's perfectly fine. Um, however, just in spite of that, we still need to. If you're if you're just sitting back and waiting for an opportunity to make a reactive invite, then you could be sitting back and waiting for a few days. And we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that every day you're doing something a little further about pushing your business further forward. 30 to 60 minutes a day, and that's what this purge call is all about. Um, and so um, we, we absolutely need the written list. We absolutely need to create 10 invites. Um, uh, we absolutely need to do two calls a day. We absolutely need to do a purge call. But around that, why not fit in the uh, reactive calls or the reactive invites as well? Just promise yourself, when I hear pain, I'm going to offer help. And the help is to offer um, a, a chance to look at the ambit business. But again, still the same five guidelines, being in a hurry, use your why, have a hook, be excited about it. It may or may not be their cup of tea, there's the takeaway, and an intentional setting of the time. Um, and uh, so it's still the same deal. It's just an offer of help rather than a proactive invite. Cool. Was there anything else that we needed to talk about today, Paul? Uh, well, we only, did, uh, we only designed four invitations. Correct. And now I've made right. two right. of them, so uh, we should uh, we should go on to a couple of more of these uh, prospective people. Okay, I don't have those notes in front of me of your ten names because it's in a in a pad that's in my car. What what are the two next names? All right, so the next name is Truly. Okay, tell me how old is Truly? Uh, she's in her mid to late twenties. Okay, so let's say. 25 plus. Uh, she married? No. Kids? No. What she do for a living? I'm not completely certain, but I believe she's some kind of performer. I know she does uh, some, some acting and, and, uh, and is quite the writer. She probably has a day job I know nothing about. I don't know her well. She joined a, a group that I'm a member of, and I've known her kind of casually for a year or so, and uh, recently she's uh, prevailed on me to do her a couple of favors, which I've been happy to do, uh, and uh, I thought I would prevail on her for a favor. Okay. Um, well, there's, there's a kind of an invite that's kind of screaming out to me, uh, which I'm happy to share with you unless you wanted to have a go first. No, let's, let's hear what you've got in mind. Okay. What I'm thinking here is um, she's younger. 
Um, and uh, so she's going to look up to you. Um, you know, she to 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 you know, you're her dad's age. You know, so she's going to look up to you. You don't know her very well. Let me ask you this: uh, Do you have, if if you were going to compliment, tell me about her and give me compliments about her? What would you tell me about her? Oh, she's just a delightful young lady. She's uh, very talented and very very nice. Okay, there you go. There, there's your there's your um, the hook that we're going to talk to her about. Um, and so what I would do is I would use the line that you hear um, Doug and Jared talking about, that you're spearheading um, uh, the growth of a billion and a half dollar company in the DFW mm -hmm. area, uh, and I would be direct. Um, uh, and and I'd, so I'd first of all be in a hurry, um, you know, say truly, hey, li listen, I'm in a little bit of a hurry right now. I've got to get back into um, – a meeting, um, but the, I've been meaning to give you a call all week. Um, do you have some time? And she will say yes. You say, well, look, um, recently um, I've uh, started a business uh, alongside what I currently do at work, and I'm currently spearheading um, the growth uh, of a billion and a half dollar company in the DFW area, which is uh, breaking all records uh, and expanding into other states like crazy. And truly, to be quite frank with you, um, I've always been really, really impressed uh, with how um, delightful you are um, what, and what a pleasant personality you are. Um, uh, and I would, uh, I'd love you to take a look at what we're doing because I'd like you to consider joining my team. So you can be really direct like that, or you could be a little bit more direct like um, uh, uh, I, I've started a, a business alongside what I'm currently doing which is going really, really well. I'm spearheading the growth of a billion and a half dollar company in the DFW area, breaking all records, expanding into new areas. And truly, let me ask you a question because I'm looking to grow this team uh, and I've been charged with growing this team. Do you keep your options open for making additional income alongside what you're currently doing? So either one of those two are both direct. Um, uh, and wording around that would work really well for me. And she's going to be very complimented by someone her dad's age saying those nice things about her and considering her as someone who, you know, you would consider for your team as you spearhead the growth of a billion and a half dollar company in the DFW area. What do you think? Well, the uh, the second one, the hey, you keep your options open uh, line is one that I've used uh, with a lot of success uh, quite a few times. It is, it is my standard go-to when I when I meet somebody. So I'll just I, I might just turn them out of the blue and say, "Hey, do you keep your options open to making extra money part time?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And usually, I get a response Sometimes. like, "What do you got?" And to, to which and then 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 I've got the option to say, "Well, I'd love to show you. Do you have some time tomorrow afternoon?" That kind of thing. Um, but I, I I have not tried the the spearheading the growth of a billion dollar company line, uh, and so I'm thinking that might work well with her. Um, well, I, th I think you need to. It needs to start because you're calling her. For me, the do you keep your options open for extra income is something. Maybe a waitress I've just met, or a bank teller, or someone okay. you know I've just met them. But you're making a distinctive decision to call her. So I think the the invite needs to have an element of I've thought about this and I've thought about you in regard to this to the invite. Uh, and so I think the invite can be a, a, just a, a just a tad longer, and so you know you obviously got to be in a hurry so she doesn't drag you into her presentation, but that you have you know you've been you know expanding outside um, what you currently do during the day. I don't know if she knows you have a current um, uh, job or not, um, and if not, you may or may not even want to mention it. If she doesn't know, say, well, look, I'm currently spearheading. Um, the growth of a billion and a half dollar company in the DFW area that's breaking all records and expanding into new states every day, um, and that's what I would say. And, and, I, and I'm looking to grow our team um, in the DFW area. Do you keep your options open for extra money? It's just a little bit more. Um, it shows some more consideration that you've really considered the reason why you're calling her. She'll be greatly complimented by that. So I, I would definitely go with that approach if you're comfortable with that. I am. I think it's a good way to go. Cool. All right. So, who next have we got? All right. Uh, I'm going to skip over the next next name on my list to go to the next one after that. His name is Robert, and the reason I'm doing that is because uh, the person I'm skipping, I don't have her phone number yet. Uh, so let me let me go on to Robert. Um, How old is Robert? Robert is 
uh, Robert is my age or a little older. He's uh, in his mid to late 50s. Okay. Uh, married, single? Married, uh, grown kids. He's got a, he might be as much as 60 now. He's uh, he's a, a retired Marine Corps. Uh, you know, he's a U.S. Marine. Uh, and uh, he's done a variety of things since getting out of the Marine Corps. Uh, I knew him uh, in politics in Illinois when he was the county Republican chairman. Okay. I'm just taking notes here as we're talking. Okay, been in politics. Okay, do you know of any pain? How, oh, well, let me ask you this. How well do you know him? Um, I knew him. Uh, we worked pretty closely together for a, for a year or two. Uh, uh, that was about five, six years ago. When was the last time you saw him? I have not seen him since then, um, but we have been in a little bit in contact on Facebook. Uh, and are you, is he local? No, he's in Chicago. Oh, is this the guy we were talking about? We no, this is a different guy than the one we were talking We no, talked a about a different Chicago guy on Sunday. <laughs> you got it. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, um, I think – well, okay, let me ask you. Do you have any thoughts about how you'd like to approach him? I actually think I want to be – do you keep your options open approach to him? I, I would. I would compliment him too, by the way. Okay. Uh, I think this is going to be similar to Truly. Uh, it's a different posture because he's the same age as you, if not older. Um, so I would definitely um, talk about, uh, you know, um, you know, you, uh, you're in a little bit of a hurry. So always be in a hurry. Um, the minute you give your call, do you have a second? Yes. Well, um, you know, I know we haven't spoken much recently, Robert, but you know, recently I've I've started. Uh, a business project alongside what I currently do um, because I'm 54 and knocking on the door of retirement and I want to make sure that um, my retirement is fully funded and I've been working with a company here in Dallas um, uh, and I've been uh, in, in charge of spearheading, again you can talk about spearheading, growth into other states uh, and in particular Chicago uh, or Illinois and Chicago area and you immediately sprang to mind you know when we worked together Back five years ago, we worked together for a year or so. You know, um, I really respected the way, you know, you conducted yourself, the way you ran your business, the way you managed people, and you immediately sprang to mind when uh, I was, uh, you know, thinking about the growth in the Chicago area. Um, and then you can ask the question: Do you keep your options open for extra uh, for extra income? Um, um, I, I might I might change. I think it's something close to that. If I'm thinking something close to that. Um, it's a, it's a okay. little bit more specific. Um, I'm okay. thinking about saying something like, with all the election stuff, I was thinking back to when I was active in politics and how much I enjoyed working with you. And I realized I needed to give you a call about what I'm doing now. Okay, you could you could definitely go that way. Um, uh, the the only thing is, it's it's a little bit more general, and it's just like it's not following any of the five guidelines. Um, so my question is, is whether or not it works, how duplicatable is it? That's not a reason not to do it. Well, um, it, it, but it, I, it, 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 it frames a compliment, how much I enjoyed working with you. I'm that, looking back to somebody in my past, and, and the, the, the takeaway from that, from that sentence is, we worked together in the past, and I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to talk about what I'm doing now. Right, uh, and then so uh, and then so wait, wait, when you then get together with him on the call, I guess you're going to make a, uh, a, a a visual presentation with him over the phone. I would imagine. Uh, is that how he's going to find out about the business? Well, then, then I thought I'd been... go to the standard line. Uh, the, hey, uh, yeah, Robert, I only have a minute. I've got to run into a meeting, but I was uh, with all this election stuff that's been going on. I was thinking back to when I was active in politics and how much I enjoyed working with you. I realized I needed to give you a call about what I'm doing now. Do you keep your options open to making extra money part-time? Okay. Uh, and, you know, if you want to go with that approach, uh, that's perfectly fine because you're following, um, you know, you are following the basic guidelines there. And obviously if he says yes, he's going to say, what do you got? Or, you know, yes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's when you can go for a real intentional uh, well, you know, what, when are you going to be by a computer? Because I've got a visual presentation you need to look at. Exactly. Um, so yeah, you can you can go that route if that's if that's what you're most comfortable with. There's definitely a compliment in there. Um, uh, and uh, at the end of the day, 
the purpose of these invites is to get people to look at the business. If mm -hmm. what you're going to tell him will get him to look at the business, then as far as I'm concerned, that's a hundred percent score rate. So, so let's see. So I respect your, you know, I respect your opinion. Um, let's, you know, try that one and see how it goes. I'd love to see how it goes. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So that's truly in Robert. Did you want to do another invite, or do you want to save a couple, uh, save uh, for tomorrow to do a couple more? Um, let's do a couple more tomorrow. It's getting kind of late, and this this call's going a bit long, and people aren't going to hang on to the, the recording that long. So, yeah, okay, let's, let's save some more. I got all, all right, different friend. kinds of people to talk to. Oh yeah, well, I'm I'm excited to see how this goes because again, you know, you're a different type of uh, victim on this call. And so uh, it gives people the real opportunity to see the thing is the thing, the thing is Paul is you will say exactly what you think and exactly how you feel and if you feel like crap because someone made you feel like it you'll say it and that's what we need on this call because there are people who are listening who are in pain who are looking for a way back on the horse so I really appreciate the way that um, you're dealing with this with such vulnerability and candor so. Well, uh, thanks for saying so. And, 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 in, and in that spirit, let me just say, honestly, I'm nobody's victim. I, I'm your temporary protege, and you're my mentor for the week. And I'm, I'm honored to be here with you. <laughs> that was so eloquently put. Have you thought about going into writing? <laughs> um, I, I've written as a hobby, and frankly, I've been rehearsing that one for four days. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, my friend. So same time tomorrow. Um, yeah. And uh, good luck tomorrow. And hopefully I'll see you at Sherlock. That'll be great. Take care. All right, man. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye now.